Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Ever wondered how to get really cool bell animations like this working in your iOS app? I had to add this recently to a project I was on, and in this episode, I'd like to show you how to add this nice shaky bell in iOS using UIKit. Okay, so first I'm going to demo the app, and then we'll get into how this was built. This is a very simple application. What I ultimately needed to do in the project was have a shaky bell up here in the upper right-hand corner. And right now I've just added a tap gesture, so every time I tap this thing, it shakes. That was the goal. How could we go that build this and have a nice little label on the right-hand side? And to do that, I built a test rig, basically. Something where I could come in and play with three different variables I wanted to manipulate for this animation, the duration, the angle, and the offset. And this little test rig lets me come in here and do things like change the duration of the animation so I can make it very quick, I can make it very slow, I could change the angle of rotation, and I could experiment with my designer and see what kind of angle that we want to get on this animation. And then there's also another parameter called the Y offset, which is where along the Y axis do we want this bell to animate? We can animate it at the very bottom down here with a Y offset relative of one, or we could animate it at the top and shake at the very top here or at the middle and just reset everything with this button here. So let's go in now and see how this was actually built. Okay, so the current project I'm working on makes heavy use of nibs. Normally I do things programmatically, but I've been working a lot with nibs, so that's what I decided to do to build this example here. The bell and the animation you see up here, this is just a PDF uh, scaled and sitting in the middle of my nib. And this is a button where I've just put the number two in there, giving it some white text, a red background. And then this image, the bell is centered horizontally and vertically and the button is just offset a little bit to the top and a little bit to the right. So that's how this bell and this animation are built. Now, because I didn't know exactly how I wanted this animation to work, I created a test rig so that I could tweak certain things and view what the different animations would look like. So here I've got a nib with the bell view inside that I ultimately want to animate sitting here. And I've just got IB actions. These are just sliders that are gonna give me values that I can use to manipulate things like duration, angle, and offset. So I just pull those into the view controller here, and then I set them on the bell view animation itself. And what that does is that takes the actual value of these things, and it applies a shake, just passing in the duration, angle, and offset to the bell animation itself. And it's really down here in this shake method where all of the animation really happens. So why don't we take a look now and see what it takes to actually animate this bell, altering things like duration, angle, and offset. Okay, so over here we've got the code that actually does the animation. This is a shake method. It takes in those three variables. And this is the code that actually does the animation. Now we've done videos before on core animation. We could have dropped down to a really low level and done that here. But in this case, I decided to stay a little bit higher in UI kit and use UI view animate keyframes. For those of you who don't know how animation works, basically we're gonna take this bell, break it into a series of keyframes and animate them. So basically what happens is you have to animate every one of these keys. In this case, I've got six frames. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and rotate that bell back and forth five or six times. And that's what's gonna give it that nice shake. And the way we do that is with UI view keyframe animations, we pass in a duration, a delay if we want, and then each one of these keyframes represents one state of the animation. So here we're gonna to rotate to the left, actually to the right, an angle of, in this case, I'm using pi divided by eight. So it's gonna rotate that way, about 22.5 degrees. Then we're gonna swing it back positively 22.5 degrees, and it's gonna animate between each one of these keyframes. Now let's just dive in and see what these parameters look like and how we can actually set them. 
So here I've got a nice little picture I've drawn that sort of shows you how the animation works. And the key thing to remember when animating these things is that when it comes to duration, it's normalized between zero and one. What that means is we need to make sure the number or the length of the duration perfectly matches the number of keyframes we have. So in this case, if I know I'm gonna to wanna to animate this bell going left and right six times, I'm gonna make that a variable just called number of frames and each frame duration relative is gonna be six divided by one. So that's what sets these durations here in this code here. So when you see me going number of frames, frame duration divided by number of frames, this is the frame duration set up here with this relative duration. So if you're ever getting a bit confused and your animations aren't perfectly lining up, make sure you've got the exact number of keyframes normalized to the number of animations you have. The duration is only really set once up here in this animate with keyframes right there. So if we want it to be two seconds, 10 seconds, or one second, we set that there. But this is a relative duration normalized between zero and one. So just be aware of that. Then the next thing we can play with is the angle. So here with each key and each frame, we're just rotating it left or right 22.5 degrees, which is pi divided by eight. So if you can't remember your high school math, the radians are the things, it's another way of representing angles in math basically. So if 180 degrees or 360 degrees goes all the way around, two pi is two pi radians, that's a full circle. Pi is half a circle. So when we go pi divided by eight, that really equates to 22.5 degrees or 0.39 radians. And that's the angle that we're specifying here. We're gonna swing left 22.5, and then we're gonna animate right 22.5 positive. And it's gonna animate between those two. So that's how the angle works. And then the offset basically is just, we can also decide where in our bell we'd like this animation to occur relative to the Y axis. So right now I've got it animating perfectly uh, just in the middle because default, according to core graphics, this point here is uh, 0.5 from the Y axis point of view. The top here is zero, the bottom here is one. So right now when we animate, I'm just animating about the middle here with an offset of 0.5. That's what the slider here represents. If I move it all the way to the right now, what I've done is I've moved my Y axis down here to an offset of one, and now it's, it's, it's animating down at the bottom there. I wish I could bring this image up more, <laughs> but I can't. But basically, I'm just rotating about this point down here. And if I slide it all the way to the left, now I'm rotating about the Y offset of zero up here, this point here, because that's how core graphics works. It's, it's, here's the origin in iOS, it's up here is zero, zero, but we're just changing the point of animation so we can change where we want that offset to occur. And that's kind of it. So that's it for today. Just a really quick one. I'm still diving into Swift UI and Combine. I'm really keen to get back into that stuff, but I just wanted to capture this you know, for myself and really show you also how to do some simple core animation. Shaky Bell is something that's super common in UIKit got a write-up on everything you've seen here on basically how it works here so you can go to Swift Arcade Animation Shaky Bell and in there I kind of walk you through how this was set up you can check out all the code there but uh, yeah basically it's a very simple example and uh, if you want to see more stuff come on back and we'll continue exploring all things Swift iOS new and old all right hope you enjoyed that thanks so much for coming everyone have a great weekend and we'll see you next time bye bye